Alright, so today I'm going to test out the request HTML uh, library for scrapping website. So let's create a folder here. Request scraper. I generally use request and build so for scrapping websites. Today I'm going to use the request HTML and I kind of like this new scraper actually. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's more easier than using beautiful soup. So now I have to add this folder to my text editor. I'm going to use the sublime text here. Let's open up the file. Okay, so I guess I have already installed it in my virtual environment. Let's test this out first. So this is the request HTML PI, PYPI page. And you can install request HTML using the pip install command. So let's copy this command and let's try to install this. Let's see if this is already installed. So if, if it's not installed, then it's going to take a couple of seconds to install the package. And uh, I also do have a documentation page beside me. So you can go to this site and you can just read the tutorial and user section to get started with request HTML. So let's see if it's installing okay so it wasn't installed now it's getting installed and as I said it will take a couple of seconds to install alright so things are looking great and the package has been installed so let's see what we are going to scrape today so here I have uh, digitaltrends.com and this is basically a, a tech blog. So our target would be to just scrape uh, these sections with those who have blog titles and uh, we can also get the links and maybe we can also get this uh, section which is we can say a summary now i i don't know that if this site is just using any javascript uh, for rendering out this data so what we can do here is we can press ctrl u to see the source code first and then i'm just going to copy uh, this block title first here so this is a this is actually a link because when I hover over this text, this is showing a hand sign. So I'm just going to copy this section or okay. Let's copy this and let's try to find this in our page source. So yeah, there is this. Hmm. And let's check this out. What it this what this thing is? So it says WP content. And I guess that this uh, site is maybe running on WordPress, or maybe it's using in some kind of API to render out the data. Most probably JavaScript. So, what we are going to do first, okay, I'm just going to grab the URL, let's go to our text editor, and we're going to create a, a variable called URL and paste that in quotation. And now since our package has been installed, all we need to do is import 
the packages so for our work we need to get the request HTML session so I'll write here from request underscore HTML import HTML in all caps S in all caps and E S S I O N for session okay so this is our URL and this is our package the first thing I will do is try to get a response from this URL and if there is a 200 OK response that means that um, the site will be accessible to scrape also there is another thing I would like to add is the user agent so why do we need an user agent because sometimes the website doesn't allow bot or scrapers to scrape their sites in there in that case we uh, have to make our scraper look like that this is a, this is a real user not a scraper so that's why we are going to need the user agent um, to send that uh, section with our request so that we can tell the server hey I'm not a bot I'm a real person okay so how to find your user agent just go to google and type what sorry about that what is my user agent and you can see your user agent uh, in this section so I'm just going to copy this and let's go back to our text editor here I'm going to create a dictionary called headers and this is the part we are going to send with our request let's create a dictionary uh, the key will be user uh, dash agent and then uh, in quotation we'll paste out our user agent alright uh, the next section we have to get is uh, I'll create a new variable called session so session would be assigned to HTML session and this will allows, allow us to get response from the URL so I'll create a new variable called res stands for response then I'll use the session and I will use a get method and pass the URL let's see if we can pass the headers as well and now I have to print restart status code and then we will check if the status code is 200 so that would mean that uh, site is scrapable okay so let me save this first now I create a folder here called request scraper so let's go to our request scraper folder first and now I will use the python and add the app.py file let's hit enter restaurant so it says here request html almost uh, oh I see this that's actually a type error so this is not request html this is request html that was the type error let's clear this out and let's run the script again so we're checking if the response is coming back as 200 it says session.get takes two positional argument but three were given um, two were given so session.get takes two positional argument but three were given okay uh, so there might be a 
some mistake in the coding let's do some google search to fix this issue so send uh, headers Okay, so if you want to send headers, you have to add a keyword argument called headers and then pass this. So, what I need to do here is I have to assign headers equals to headers. And now we can hope to get a 200 OK response from the site. Okay, so we get, uh, got a 200 OK response. That means the site is accessible to scrape. But we are not still sure if it is. Because sometimes the data might be just uh, coming back from, what should I say, a front-end framework or JavaScript so let's go back to the site and now we'll have to inspect a few things here so what I'll do here since this is highlighted I can just go here and click my right button to inspect this element okay so the site is also mobile responsive okay so if I come down here, I can see that this is a link and uh, there is a diff class and there is also a, a h3 tag and underneath this h3 tag there is this link. So what we can do here is that we can uh, first find this div tag and inside this we can find the h3 tag with this class and then extract the anchor tag because the anchor tag uh, doesn't have any classes so classes will be our identifier uh, to select the element from this page so basically you use CSS selectors in order to scrape any any tag so I'll just go here and first I'll, I'll just copy this class and then what I'll do here is I'll just go back to my script and I will try to find this um, find this h3 or uh, this div so I can just name it as article and then I will use the rest and use the html dot find method and then I will pass uh, first the div element since we want to get the div element and then we will assign the class that has been used inside this div so we'll put a dot sign first and then paste out the class uh, since since this is going to return us uh, all the elements that is containing this class we are going to assign a keyword argument here called first to true first equals true because we want to only get the first element from the array so um, let's go ahead and print the article so we can see what the result is standing Okay, so let me clear this out and now let's run the script. So it says here this is a div class with this 
uh, which means that this script is working what we can do here is that we can go here and uh, try to find the h3 h3 tag inside this and uh, with this class okay so let me copy this and let's go to here let's try to find the h3 tag h3 tag so i'll write here article dot and now this time because we are trying to search the h3 tag inside the article so we'll not write here html dot find we'll just write here article dot find and inside this i'm going to add the h3 tag first and then i'll pass the class that has been used here okay so um one thing is that uh, sometimes this the spaces can might occur some problems so in order to suppress that problem we'll just going to remove the space and add dots here so we this will be referred as the classes as well and we'll add here first to true because we want to get the first element and then let's add a text method so we can see what the text is and now i will try to print uh, the h3 tag to see the output let's clear this out and then let's run the script so it says here 12 high profile tech opportunities for those job hunting which means that uh, this scraper actually scraped the text that is inside this h3 tag and uh, also we can go ahead and extract the link here so I, I will create another variable here called uh, let's say the uh, title title underscore link and same we will try to find the anchor tag now I'll just copy this section if you notice here the anchor tag doesn't have a class but because we are using the article that is containing this class we can only go ahead and search for an anchor tag inside this div okay so after that because we want to get the get this source or this href instead of adding the text here what we will write here is adders stands for attributes and in square brackets we will pass href because we want to get the link so now what i will do here i will try to print the h3 tag and as well as the title link and if that works then we can scrape many data from this page so let me clear this out and let's run this all right so we can see there is this title with this link and which means that this blog is scrapable with uh, request HTML and we can get all the latest posts with their titles and links so let's go ahead and create a for loop in order to scrape all those titles and links so instead of adding first true 
in this article I'm just going to remove this because now I want to get all of those articles that has this class I mean I want to get all of those divs that has this class okay so instead of writing article I will just you add here an S stands for articles and now we will try to go ahead and loop over through this uh, list because this will return us a list okay so now we will use a for loop so for article in articles I want to find the h3 tag uh, that has uh, h3 and class classes like this and I want to get the first uh, first uh, element in the list so I will add here first equals true then text and I want to get the link so this will remain exactly that as we have previously uh, wrote this okay so now I can either go ahead and print this or what I can do here is I can uh, create an array first and I can say this as master underscore list and our target will be that whatever data we will scrape will always be appended to this master list so that we can later use this master lead master list for different kinds of output maybe we want uh, this this result into a csv file or maybe we just want to create a json data uh, it's up to you actually so now what I will do here is that I will uh, call the master list first then I will append the h3 tag and the title so I'll add here curly braces and I will use title as the key and pass the h3 tag and then I'll create a URL uh, key and pass the title link as the value okay so after this uh, has been added we can <coughs> create another loop for element in master list print element now save that all and let's run this application okay so we have a lot of data but uh, we are not sure how many blog posts we got so what I'll do here is that uh, I will add an information here print uh, numbers numbers of uh, post script and we'll use a f string here and inside curly braces we'll pass length of our master list okay we can save all and let's hope this works okay so we can see that number of post script was 22 so Ah, that's really cool. Now, 
I'm going to use uh, a library called pandas in order to convert this master list into a CSV file. So at the top I will write here from actually import pandas as pd and then uh, let's remove this we don't need that we'll create a data frame so I uh, will use a variable called df equals to pd dot data frame and we'll pass the master list here then we'll convert this uh, data frame into CSV so I'll use here df dot to underscore CSV and in parentheses the first argument is going to be the name of the CSV file so I can call this file as digital trends dot CSV and the second argument would be if you want the index to be true or if you want this to be false so I always use index uh, assigned to be false and we can also set the encoding to be UTF-8 UTF-8 and then we can also go ahead and print the data frame in order to see if the scraping really happened okay so save all and now let's clear this out and hope this uh, works so one thing I haven't mentioned that uh, the pandas module was already installed in my virtual environment and for that reason I was able to import the pandas now the scraper is actually scraping the data and uh, by now it should have okay so it scraped all the 22 posts and it's also converted that into a data frame and we can see uh, first few data so from from starting number to 0 to 21 the data uh, this uh, data frame has and if you closely look there is also a CSV file beside my script and if I open this there is this data okay so we have all the titles and we have all the links so you can use this scraper as like to get the latest post from digital trends um, instead of just visiting their site um, you can just uh, get uh, the latest post uh, titles from your uh, scraper we haven't added the uh, the summary of the text we could have just like by inspecting this section okay uh, I think yeah this is the section what we have to scrape so we could have located for a div with this class and get this uh, summary text so I'll, I'll leave that to you guys and let's go ahead and explore this uh, request HTML uh, package or, or library whatever you say I, I really love how this uh, library is helping to make the web scrapping more easier I had been using the request and beautiful soup for a long time but um, I really like this new uh, web scraper um, and uh, there is also another section um, I might uh, try to post a video on that the request HTML also helps you to scrape from dynamic sites sites like that uh, renders out data based on a, based on a front-end framework uh, or or the site that, that is loading data based on JavaScript so request HTML also helps out to uh, scrape data from those kind of sites as well 
um, I haven't tested this yet out but uh, I will try to test this out later and uh, show you uh, show you how to do it in in some later video for now uh, that that was all and what I will do here is that I'll just put a github link in the description so you can just go out uh, fetch uh, the file uh, you can see the code and uh, start experimenting on your own okay so that was all for today and uh, I hope you really like the tutorial and uh, if you really like uh, the tutorial then please uh, thumbs up the video that will really inspire me and if you really like the video again uh, please subscribe to the channel for upcoming latest contents and uh, stay tuned bye bye